Hey, what's up, Closer Nation? It's Whiteboard Wednesday. I'm going to tell you something that, listen, probably your sales manager is not going to tell you. It's probably something you're not going to hear from your colleagues. It's probably something you're not going to hear from your mentor, other than unless your mentor is me. But I'm going to tell you to stop blowing your money. Now, here's the thing. You stop blowing your money, and I'm going to give you some reasons why you're going to stop blowing your money. But first, listen, let me ask you this real quick. Are you the top producer where you work? Right? Are you like the top producer? Whether you're the top 10, top 5, do you even want to be? the top producer wherever you work. You see, because I know that when I worked in corporate America and I sold cars and I sold mortgages and I sold real estate and I did all these things, I was always the top person. And then the second place, they couldn't even relate to where I was at. And then I go into some of the big corporations and I see guys that are in the middle that could be on their way to the top, but they don't have the interaction with the right people to teach them stuff. And so I created a program called Break Free Academy Entourage, where it's an entourage of people like you. Like if you're watching this video, you're obviously a superstar in sales and you want to become even better and you want to make more money and grow and adapt and things like that in your life. That's what I put this group together for. It's not only me teaching you and mentor you and helping you with advertising, sales, business building, all that stuff. It's a network of people who get it. Some of the people in there earn six figures a month, some of them seven uh, figures a year. Some of them work for billion dollar companies. Some of them own multiple billion dollar companies. So I have like a group of people that you should surround yourself with and the easiest way to gain access to it is going to Break Free Academy Entourage. So let's talk about reasons why you shouldn't be blowing your money. And Entourage is a good investment. First of all, in 2011, I was down on my luck. Uh, you know, my son Jax was just born. My oldest son Jax was just born. I hadn't had a kid before. I had no idea that it was going to be a $16,000 uh, hospital bill. And it was like, dude, everything was coming at me. I had to go take a job. I had to step away from entrepreneurism. And it was a bad time. But I had a little bit of money saved up because I've always saved money because I always want to be in the market for whatever it is. I want to be in the market when the time arises. And someone hits me up in a bad situation and says, for $1,000, I'll sell you this house. I thought, I guess you can't lose if you get a piece of real estate, even if the house is a complete shithole, which obviously it was, I couldn't lose. This house was in um, Cleveland, Ohio or somewhere around, somewhere in Ohio, something like that. It was, uh, anyway, it doesn't matter. It was definitely in Ohio. And so I bought this house for a thousand bucks. And so it, instead of going out and spending a thousand bucks at the bar and all this other stuff, right, I spent a thousand dollars on this house. Now I watched the guys around me. Uh, at this time, they would go, uh, the guys that sold cars, for example, they would go and they would spend $1,000 at the strip club for the night. They would spend, they'd wear these like fancy shoes and all this other stuff. We'll get to that in a minute. But meanwhile, I just stayed the same thing, t-shirt, kept it real, uh, didn't ever go out and have to have a bunch of fancy stuff, took $1,000. How much would you suspect that I made from that $1,000 investment on that home when I sold the home? What do, you, what do you guess? Right, just like take a typical guess. What are you thinking? Maybe 5,000, maybe 2,000, 10,000? Well, I made, I sold this house for $30,000, liens and all. So technically I made $29,000 off of 1,000 bucks. So for the price that somebody could buy some shoes, right? For the price that somebody can get a nice shirt, I've been able to invest $1,000 and be able to get a $30 or $29,000 return or a 29,000%, right? Is that right? 29,000% return on my investment. The next thing I want to talk to you about, because man, you think $1,000 is no big deal. I hear guys all the time in the sales world talk about, ah, oh, you know, it was only $1,000. Oh, I went out and bought these. Look at these shoes, $1,000. I see guys all the time, look at my $1,000 watch. Look, I don't even wear a watch. Look at my $1,000 watch. Or they say, you know, oh yeah, what's well, $1,000 a month for my car or whatever the case. $1,000 can be a lot of money because I parlayed this $30,000 into a stock portfolio over at E-Trade. And I've consistent, well, it was 29,000. But I put uh, totally $30,000, parlayed it over into an e-tron uh, account of trade, uh, e an e-trade account. Damn it, I'm all flubbering up over here. And so I put it into an e-trade account and then consistently continue to add $1,000 per week, uh, or I'm sorry, $1,000 per year into that e-trade account. And I let it sit there, right? So $1,000 per year, not even a massive amount. And so now, obviously, that one portfolio, one of many portfolios, has now grown to over $48,000 just from that same parlay. So this $1,000 investment right now, as all time being throughout the course of history, has got me $48,000 without me really having to do anything for it. Right, that same $1,000 could have went to a bottle of rosé at the club, right? Uh, three ounces of weed, not that I know the exact math on that. It could have went to, I've seen people that wear like $1,000 jeans and shit like that. A two pair of $500 jeans, a thousand bucks. People wear $1,000 for a watch, ain't nothing. A watch? There are clocks everywhere at this point. I could see if we were all in the middle of the wilderness, 
right? If we were all in the middle of the wilderness and none of us knew what time it was and we needed a compass and, you know, one person had a watch and they were like, the only way you can get this is for a thousand bucks, man, right? I've been in prison. When I was in prison, people would sell watches like, the only way you can get this, they wire me a thousand dollars. Like, I'll take that Timex, right? And so, like, I can understand some situation like that, but iPhone, Android, everything's got a clock on it, the computer, your car, every, I, I just don't understand. Uh, strippers, man, you know, $1,000 is a pretty cheap night for many of you. These are boobs, guys, and that's an ass, right? That's that ass, and that's the silicone ass. So a lot of you blow $1,000 at the strip club, you don't even think nothing of it. And you, but the, here's the thing. It's not that you do it once. It's not that you buy one pair of Gucci shoes or a thousand dollar pair of jeans or some rose or a watch or the weed. I wouldn't know anything about that. It's not that you do that, it's that you consistently do it. And so we say, oh, I'm broke. Oh, I don't have any money. Or, oh, I got to wait till I get paid again. Stop doing this shit. Stop it. Right? And start focusing on this stuff over here. Look, this one, and I'm only telling you one time where I've got lucky in my life and hit this. There's been plenty of instances where I've got lucky and grown this portfolio. My net worth is way more than just the, the $50,000 total from all this stuff that I've gone because here's the thing. I learned the art of advertising. Because I made this money from selling the house and made the money through the stock portfolio, I learned the art of advertising. So when I came up, I was able to take some of this money and withdraw it from E-Trade because that's one of the things that they let you do. I sold off some stock withdrew it from E-Trade and invested it over here into the art of advertising. For me, it was on Facebook, okay? And we still advertise on Facebook. You might be seeing this as an ad right now on Facebook. And so I would create a free offer, right? Opt in to get this. You used to make people give us their name, email address, and phone number for these kind of videos. Now we just kind of give them away because we're cool like that. And we're like, fuck it, if you want to hang out with us, you know where to find us. And so, but that now I can spend $1,000 a day on Facebook. Like for example, last year I spent $256,000 on Facebook and it returned me over $2 million, okay? So think about that. This $1,000 investment added up to $30,000 in, in total income, parlayed over to $48,000 in the stock portfolio, parlayed over to $1,000 a day that I put into advertisement almost every day last year. This whole thing has fueled everything that I have, but if I was consistently spend a thousand dollars a week, thousand dollars a paycheck on dumb shit, right? Now don't get me wrong, I drink. I take people to the country club all the time, but guess what, I'm self-employed and I'm a multimillionaire and I use that as a tax write-off and a way to communicate with our prospects, right? It's different than me just going to the club and getting a bottle with a couple of my homeboys that don't do us any good. If I go to the club and I get a bottle, guess what? Thursday night, we're having a party at Avenue. We're having a Waterloo Revival and Tom Ritchie are gonna play at a concert for my buddy Dustin Black. We're gonna go there, we're gonna have a good time, but it's a business of it, right? We're spending, we're investing that money. It's no different than investing that money in advertising. We're investing these bottles of rose, and, and Dustin by, by no means is like involved in the other stuff, but maybe I am involved in some of this other stuff. We'll be investing that to, for advertising dollars, right? And so here's what I want you to understand, is that if you're blowing money consistently and then you're always in that situation where you're broke until the next paycheck, man, stop. I want to show you the power of $1,000. Now, obviously, I've made a lot of good decisions and some bad ones as well uh, since 2011 when this first took place. But this was the fuel that got me. This was the fuel that helped me buy my website, that helped me learn this landing page software, that got me into Kevin Nation's mastermind, that turned me on to all these other avenues and everything that I've learned over the years all started because I started getting serious with money. Instead of going out and partying like I watched all my friends and everybody else do, I started getting serious about my money. And you're probably like, why the fuck is this dude always telling me to save money? Because here's what I feel, right? Just know that this is coming from my heart right? I don't think that us salespeople have that long left, right? They are trying to fucking run us out. Have you seen artificial intelligence, robots, automated follow-up systems? Like they, the things that I teach are the things that are ironically running. It's going to replace a lot of salespeople. And I want you to know that this like game that we're on right now, it's, it, it's irrational exuberance as Alan Greenspan calls it. It's irrational exuberance. And you can't think that it's just going to be there forever because what if it isn't? If it is, fucking A, that's awesome. If it's not, Fuck you, that's what happens. Fuck me too, right? I'm a salesman too. Fuck us, shit, right? That's what happens. And so I, I want you to be prepared, okay? I, you have families, you have people that you take care of, you have employees, I want you to stop thinking with these short-sighted, short-pleasured returns that you're gonna get that really lead to hungover, you know, uh, uh, 
anxiety and everything else in the morning where you have like bad memories where you're like, oh, dude, did I really do that? And you feel like you made a bunch of guilty decisions and everything else. Instead, man, create the confidence that you need, right? I promise you there ain't a bottle of fucking rosé off of any stripper's ass in America right now that feels as good as making $29,000 off of $1,000 and parlaying that into becoming a millionaire. I fucking promise you. I promise you ain't no stripper's ass worth that fucking feeling. I promise you. I tried, but then I wised up, <laughs> right? So here's the thing, guys. Listen, we may have forever. We may be around. Some people believe salespeople are going to be around forever. I tend to think that the robots are coming for our job because they've already removed the McDonald's clerk. They've already removed some of the other people. And sure, we provide great service and all those things you want to tell yourself. What if I'm wrong? Cool. But what if I'm right? And what if I'm right? I want you to be able to take care of your family. And if you invest in the stock portfolio now, if you invest in real estate now, if you invest in long-term universal life insurance where you're going to be able to draw money against it in the future, if you start putting towards those things now, what's going to happen is if we are all wiped out, if our jobs do go away, because Jack Ma and Elon Musk have said that we're headed for a 40-year misery period on Earth because we've got to make this adjustment between the robots and the humans. Like, this is real shit billionaires are talking about. And so I want you to have the money to be able to rely on the people that weren't fucking prepared. Don't be the person in Florida where the fucking hurricane's been, they've been telling you for two weeks the hurricane's coming to get the fuck out of the state. And then you stay there and you're like, my house, my dog died. Yeah, they've been telling you to fucking leave. I'm the weather guy telling you that maybe it's time to fucking leave, right? Start leaving this shit behind and start leaving your money into things like this. So that if the shit starts to hit the fan, it's cool. You got a wetsuit on. Let's roll. Make sure you share this with somebody who needs to hear it. Later.